Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Talking Upstream, which is literally my favorite show that comes on Sundays as long as Curb Your Enthusiasm isn't on. And I don't know when that's yeah. on, but I watch it constantly. It is such a weird, funny show. Uh, Dylan, my friend, how are you, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm all great, right. dude. I'm great. I'm about to move soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I have all of my fun stuff back here because I'm moving. Uh, and this, that backdrop. Yeah, if I were to spin this camera on, it'd be literally just empty over here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I made this vinyl of all my favorite stuff. So uh, I don't know if you could tell this is a good vinyl that I built. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if, if you know us, welcome back. If you don't know us, we are some nobodies. My name is Zach and this is Dylan over here. And we're content creators. We're uh, uh, media makers. We are uh, ear shakers. Uh, if people are talking about us, I think. Wait, is that a saying? <laughs> Shakers. <laughs> I didn't read the rest of that. I just stopped it oh. here for some reason. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we do is we like to find a bunch of content. And we like to consume the crap out of it. Uh, I'll look through Amazon Prime and find the weirdest stuff. I'll look on YouTube and find short films. And then I'll find out who made those short films. And then I'll stalk them uh, incessantly until we become friends. And hopefully uh, this is about to happen. And I found one film on YouTube. And I was kind of interested in it, so I looked it up, and then I kind of looked through all the people that are on there, and I found someone that might be perfect for our show. So, Mr. Dylan Terry, I'm going to ask you to please introduce our guest of the week. Of course. So this week you can uh... – wow, okay, let me restart that. This week we are joined by an actor, screenwriter, director. His name is Australia Kin Cannon. Let's bring him on. Hi. Hello. Hello, Australia. How are you? Uh, I'm fantastic. How about you guys? Uh, I, I'm oh. doing great. Dylan is doing subpar, I think. Uh, he, he he fluffed his first line, so. Yeah, yeah I saw. Is, Take two. <laughs> <laughs> if we had a post, we would fix it. We would have fixed that yeah. in post. Uh, anyway, thank Call you so much for footage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. We love meeting uh, anyone who's a creative, especially uh, somebody who could be a new friend of ours. So uh, welcome to our show. Well, thank you for having me. Like, super serious. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, now, I, like I said, I found I found a short uh, a short horror film called Manifest. I'm not even sure how I found it on YouTube. And then when I uh, did as much research as I felt like doing on it, uh, I came across your name. And you just played a part in this role. I thought that you had written it, but you just played a part in You played Barb. Barbara? Yeah, yeah. It was Barbara. a 48, so I played the mom, which is always really funny when people are like, oh, yeah, you could play the mom. And I'm like... Have you looked at me? I'm yeah, I know. When I when I watched it, I was like, I was like, is are they? That's her mom. Okay. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yeah, I was like 30 when I did that, and uh, they were like, well, uh, we'll just go ahead and have you be the mom. And Kara was a sweetheart, and she wrote it. And I'm always like, I'm always super thrilled to work with people. It was actually my first uh, time acting on screen, so that was really fun. And uh, but I got hypothermia because I was dead in the pool and there was no heat in it. And I was in the shower for like 45 minutes under hot water. And uh, I don't recommend that. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> so but, you, you, you started out as acting and then you kind of branched out. What was it that acting that kind of got you into wanting to be a creator or did you kind of uh, have stuff in mind? Oh, uh, well, uh, hmm. I don't remember, uh, but <laughs> oh, okay. wait, no, 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 wait, it's coming to me. I took an acting class and, uh, and I was like, oh shit, I love this. This is so much fun. And, but I know because I'm told that I'm a really good second, like I'm a really good, uh, second reader and stuff like that, which is a supporting actor. And I'm totally fine with that. Uh, and I'll never be, I'll never be a lead, which is fine too. Uh, but the only way I'll do that is if I put myself in my own stuff. And that's what I started doing. So I wrote I wrote my first uh, screenplay, which was Bound. And uh, that was when my ex and I were living in a trailer on our property. 
Um, and uh, I had nothing else to do. <laughs> and I was just like, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. And so I wrote my first screenplay and it was really cool because it won a couple of awards and I was like, oh shit, I like this. And so I just wrote, I wrote a couple shorts after that. Um, and uh, so I was like, oh, I really like this, but I also like directing and acting and doing all the other stuff too. So I am very confused. <laughs> that's, that, that's okay. That's exactly where I am. I just keep <laughs> trying to make Dylan make me do more stuff and he won't. Uh, I just keep making him do more stuff. Do well, that, No, that's Hard. cool. So uh, Bound, what, uh, if you want to briefly go over what that's about. Oh, uh, so uh, Detective Anastasia Brenna, um, she, wait, okay, let me see. It's been a minute. Uh, two years after Detective State, uh, two years after the death of her sister, Detective Anastasia Brenna um, is the lead on a serial killer case that's been spanning for a couple years as well. Um, her and her partner are something... I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, so I actually did a, I did a proof of concept for it and uh, it's a crime thriller. Um, detective find uh, is on the trail of a serial killer. Uh, her partner and her are forced to uh, meet up, uh, work with the FBI. She doesn't want to, she fucking hates outsiders because she, it's not necessarily that she's uh no, this is my show, but that's kind of what she is also. Cause she's young uh it's not that she has anything to prove she's just really good at what she does and she doesn't like other people helping uh and so also because her sister was murdered before and she's just not a very open person so she's forced to work with somebody that she used to know and it's just yeah and so they uh there's some stuff that happens and yeah i watched when i was writing this i watched a lot of kiss the girls and saw okay. and like i was like doing that and yeah it's i mean it's a really fun i shot a proof of concept ended up being 25 minutes long but i did a three minute like proof of concept trailer which actually looks pretty good uh but we didn't have a sound person she didn't show up uh on the first day or the second day and uh so we were kind of fucked the rest of the thing so it sounds like shit but it looks like it was shot in 2000 so it's not too bad okay <laughs> so did, did you did you like go out to get like to, to make like a like a cop like almost noir kind of detective thing or was there something character driven in that that like you were really because you know, we always have uh one of, one of the problems that uh, i have is that i have these these kind of broad concepts and then you know i i can't really figure out a way to put them uh down into like the characters whereas i think dylan is really good at coming up with character development and then we kind of get to plug those into certain scenarios which is great um was it was it the <laughs> I'm sorry. Was it the crime, like the crime drama that you were looking for? Or was it the character Anastasia that you were like, I want to figure out who this person is? Uh, both, like hardcore both. Um, so I I have such a hard on for like cop thriller movies. Like I love those kind of movies. Uh, Saw is my favorite horror movie. I absolutely fucking love that movie and all its imperfections. I fucking love it. And so I wanted to create something that was a little bit like that, but not but not obviously a direct copy because that would be ridiculous and illegal. <laughs> but um, I don't know. And I also thought the idea of a lead character that looked more androgynous than the usual hot girl detective that they do. Uh, I thought that would, might be kind of cool. And she's not driven by um, she's not driven. She's more driven by rage than anything. So it's a very male character trait that they do with these guys. Um and uh, by the end of it, she has to come to some acceptance with a lot of earth shattering shit that she finds out. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know. It was one of those things. I had a dream about it and I could not get it out of my head. So I spent two weeks for like 13 hours a day, just chilling on my couch, just typing this up. And that's just way, the way it came out. Um, and I wanted to shoot the feature. I even tried to rally people over the last year since I had edited the uh, proof of concept, but money is so hard to find. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, yeah. I was like, I could do this for $50,000. Like I did my short that was 25 minutes long for, for 2,600. Like if I had $50,000, I could do it right. But it just didn't happen. Um, so maybe someday, but you know, whatever I did shoot a couple of shorts in between then and now, um, that I wrote and directed as well that I was not in, but, uh, uh, 
yeah i fucking love it man now is is there like a like a through line to all of your work like is there something that you're trying to make sure all of your work has in it or just like maybe the way your brain works where it's like oh this all kind of follows this kind of idea or thread or purpose uh yes and if well so i i hate stereotypes like uh, like film stereotypes with a passion being a, 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 a female of uh, the female persuasion and all that stuff. Um, it's very frustrating also because I am plus size and it's, it's really hard to find representation uh, that you're not just like the fat fucking funny friend or whatever, which by the way, if anybody's watching, I am totally good at that. <laughs> um, but that's my role. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> but, um, I don't know. It's just, uh, like I'm, I'm writing one right now where, um, well, actually not necessarily writing. Well, we just shot a short, um, called Licorice Smiles. And, uh, I made sure that in the short, even though the main character, uh, kind of meets a guy that she's like, kind of, she's like, oh my God, he's so cute. And they have like their meet cute thing. When she talks to her friend slash manager later, um, they don't talk about him. So I made sure that there wasn't mention of him and stuff like that. Cause that's really how it goes. Like, I don't know about you guys, but, um, eventually it comes up. Like, you're like, man, I saw this wiener the other day and it was just crazy, but you need, I need you to know about this, but it's not always like that. A lot of the time you do just talk business or other shit that's going on and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure my characters are doing that. Um, cause it's natural and normal. Uh, and so I try and do stuff like that, or I'll put characters that you really wouldn't necessarily think of usually in a leading role like myself. And, um, uh, and, and like in my proof of concept bound, 90% of the actors are women and they're all of different, uh, ethnicities or, um, uh, uh, sizing or whatever, you know, you wouldn't, and it's not even a thing. They just exist. They just simply exist. Uh, so that's like one of my things, but also uh, if I'm acting in it, most of the time I will write that I'm making out with somebody. Cause that is awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Dylan always writes scenes in our podcast for us to make out. And I'm like, yeah. this is We're audio. Recording this remote. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, Dylan, this is audio. Why are we making out together? This does not make any sense. <laughs> Get your head off my thigh. You dead yeah. bastard. How'd you do that? We're, we're like a state apart. Uh, now that, that actually brings me to one of the questions I like to ask people is, you know, D Dylan and myself, we are, we are two, uh, uh, cisgendered, you know, white males, and we are trying to just crank out nonstop content. And, you know, when you listen to some people, it's like, Oh, well, write what you know. And obviously all we really know, well, I can't being white cisgender males. Exactly. So <laughs> then it's like, okay, well let's, let's at some point we have to tell ourselves and stop. It's like, Hey, let's make sure that there's not just a bunch of just white yeah. dudes in this thing. Um, but do you have any advice for people that are just white dudes that are writing stories to make sure that they are trying to be more inclusive without the hubris of just, I'm putting this in there because I think this should be in there. When I do casting calls, I, unless it's specified, like super specific, like they're siblings. So they need to be like the same ethnicity at least or whatever. I never put, I just put looking for male, looking for female, uh, either presenting or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Uh, cause, uh, ethnicity is always open and sizing is always open for me. The only, the only, uh, thing that that would ever really outside of siblings or like mother, you know, like whatever. Um, even then it's still, I mean, do you guys remember, uh, the Cinderella movie with yes. Brandy in it? Roger Hammer signs. Yeah. Yes. Not yep. one person ever questioned why Whoopi Goldberg and Victor Gerber had a freaking Asian baby. Yeah. Like nobody <laughs> questioned it. Right. Uh, so you can get away with that a lot of the time. Um, now, obviously people are so like super woke right now. So you probably couldn't, but um, it's uh, but like, that's how you do it is you literally just, you're like, Oh shit, they're an amazing actor. They're going to be perfect for this. And it doesn't have to be, uh, I don't know. I feel personally, it doesn't have to be, uh, specific. Like I, uh, that's the cool thing about also casting my own stuff is that I get to see, uh, actors and I get to see them do their thing, uh, with the guidelines literally of 
them existing as a male or female or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's it. And a lot of the time it's going to be, uh, I don't know, like there's only three actors in my last in my, the one we just did me being one of them and, uh, two other actors. And she was a very beautiful white female, uh, very thin. Uh, but I also only, I got like a crap ton of auditions for her, but most of them were trash. And when I saw her, I just knew she was perfect. Like I was like, Oh my God, this is the check. She's perfect for this. And then uh, the lead uh, actor, I got a lot of, um, I got, well, not as many, but, and he ended up being a very cool Asian dude. And, and so it didn't, doesn't even matter, you know? So you have like three types in there and, and it's, I don't know, it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good anyway. Yeah. So when, when you're writing, do you, do, do your characters like, you know, as you're writing this and the, these characters are in your brain, do they have a look to them that you are trying to be surprised by? Okay. So when I write, I'm always constantly thinking about uh, specific actors, like famous actors we all know and stuff, because uh, it helps me kind of create like what I'm looking for. Now, obviously when I'm casting and stuff that could change, but I'm looking kind of for that uh, kind of their character more than like the physical. Like when I was, uh, when I was casting for this last one, I actually wanted a will um, a Patrick Wilson type for the lead. Okay. Not necessarily his looks, just more of his demeanor. And that's all I wanted. So I wrote guy next door, very sweet, not a creep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, kind of thing, right? And um, that's kind of like what I'm looking for. And again, sometimes it changes, but uh, mostly, yeah, like when I was writing Bounds, I, I wrote one of the characters with Carrie Elwes in mind and Cap Cole Hauser in mind, but obviously that's going to change with, uh, you know, people auditioning and things like that. But that's like the demeanor more than anything of what I'm looking for. Also, Carrie Elwes is just charming as fuck, so... Except, except to... when he's doing that Boston accent. That was a tough one to watch. <laughs> what was that in? I just I just watched that recently. I was like, why are you doing Boston? I mean, I get you're doing Boston, but it's one of the later was. Saw movies when he's no, like, it wasn't no, a, no. It wasn't a Saw movie. I, didn't think so. I just watched it. I have no it idea. Was, anyway, oh, was uh, it Stranger Things? No. Oh my god, he's in, that he's, was so, he does yeah, that. Yeah, he was no, he was like a he was a he was a cut like a detective or a, he was a head police chief of boston ah, what doesn't matter anyway so okay so obviously you like saul and because you, you obviously like patrick wilson you're a huge james wan fan because oh james my god wan I am. loves I patrick wilson i know james wan obviously saw a guy uh do you have other influences other than uh you know james wan like when you grew up what were you watching uh well my first horror movie was uh friday the 13th part nine and um or was it part nine? The one Jason goes to hell. So is oh, that boy. eight or nine? nine. Anyway, uh, I saw that. I was like eight. And <laughs> and uh, it made such an impact on me. Because that's the one where the guy freaking eats his heart. He's like, rah, rah, rah. and then he goes around and starts <laughs> killing people. And then Jason's also alive too. And I was just like, oh my God. And my mom's like, this is too scary for her. And my dad's like, He's like, no, no, it'll be fine. I'll put hair on her chest. You want hair on your chest, right? I'm like, yeah, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, but I, I I, don't know. I love a, like Hellraiser. I think that is one. Of, like we could talk about a lot of the um, like the 80s had a huge impact for horror because outside of like some of it, that was just absolutely atrocious. Only in the fact of uh, more of the context of it, like you don't need hardcore rape scenes to make something horrific and scary mm -hmm. because a lot of women deal with that every day. But uh, but Hellraiser fucking fantastic when it comes to that kind of stuff, because it's like I won't even let my kid's sister watch that. And I let her watch Saw with me. So like it's it's kind of, you know, out there a little bit. But I, but in a good way, like tastefully done, if that makes sense, right? Like, I know it sounds weird, like Hellraiser tastefully done. No, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, um, uh, I, uh, I enjoy, I enjoy quite a lot of, uh, horror movies from like the early 2000s and mid 2000s. A lot of them are really good and well done because I feel like, and I, I hate to say it, <laughs> but, uh, James really, uh, James Wan really kind of kickstarted it with Saw and people were like, Mm -hmm. wait we could do horror movies again and 
And, but you know, of course, before that, like one of my favorite horror movies is Ghost Ship. Do you guys remember the opening to that fucking movie? Yeah, well, it's all the people most, cut in half. Yeah. yeah. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like yeah. the, the production value and, and the movie wasn't even that uh, much of a uh, budget. It was, I think it was like five or $10 million, something like it sounds like a lot to us, but like for them, it's like nothing, right? Yeah. And, uh, and it was so, God, that movie was so beautifully done. And the storyline was so good. Like, I love that movie so yeah. much. I mean, most of that um, budget had to go to Juliana Margulies because <laughs> right? <laughs> they're not cheap. That's, <laughs> no. that's what I found out. Yeah, but but man, like, and then uh, like House on Haunted Hill, that's one of my favorites. So like the end of the 90s and the early 2000s were like super peak, like 13 Ghosts fucking amazing i fucking love that movie and matthew lillard is fucking amazing in that matthew lillard is amazing yeah he's like literally i've never seen anything with him in it where he was awful like he was just in twin peaks the the return or whatever mm -hmm. for like an episode or two and he's not even a major character in it and you're just like oh my god i love this so much and well, i'll let you down watch wing commander <laughs> <laughs> that is a very bad Matthew Lillard movie. That already uh, sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Freddie, Freddie Prince is like a cat person, I think. I don't know. It's a really bad, bad movie. <laughs> uh, based on the popular video game of the 90s, Wing Commander. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, though, 80s did make probably, you're, I mean, you're right. Like, the early 2000s with, with the you know resurgence of, like, the more indie, you know, like, insidious, you no, know, like, the cool, like, you know, like, lower James budget. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Um but I mean, the '80s though they had like the weirdest horror. Like probably the scariest movie I've ever seen ever is a movie called Serpent and the Rainbow, and that came out in the '80s, and that was all just about voodoo, and that was probably the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, but I agree with you. Like you know, going to like rape and and, and stupid tropes is to me it's it's a stupid easy way of of trying to just make an obvious scare mm -hmm. when there are. Uh, and Hellraiser, and I understand what you're saying. Like, it is smarter in that it's not lazy. It, it is, it mm -hmm. is, you know, it, it's it's up there. You really got to think about what you're watching, and it isn't just I'm a creepy dude following you home. I'm knocking on the door now. I'm looking in the window. Eh, I'm a sticker. I'm sticker bushes raping you from behind. Like, yeah, like, like that's just on. so unnecessary. I lose, yeah. I lose 100 mm -hmm. interest in a movie in the moment that start happening, and it's because even though the body count in horror movies is uh like it's like seven to ten or whatever like men are mostly killed you see it for about a split second but they really relish in torturing a woman mm -hmm. and i'm just over that shit yeah yeah you, you, you <laughs> really get that that, like, that scared man uh scene and the man's like what's you know uh, uh, and you know the, that the mental torture that that you know they always put women and the through. fact that the guys yeah. always scream like this oh and we all yeah. know men don't fucking scream like that <laughs> yeah they scream like it's it's a natural human thing to have mm -hmm. a high pitch scream because it's an alert it's not a uh, oh i need to be cool oh. yeah 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 i'm not i'm not excitedly dying here i'm having a very <laughs> very bad time um dylan do you have any questions before i steamroll this entire interview uh, I mean, we've talked a lot about inspiration and where it comes from and your inspirations in particular if you were handed a horror revival of any franchise which one would you choose to revive mm. oh that's so or funny. any entry in it doesn't have to be a revival if you could do like a right. either a long-term sequel or something like that do you have a do you have a franchise you'd be particularly interested in writing or directing for oh my god uh yeah um of course uh because i've already mentioned it like 500 times i would totally love to write a saw movie all right i and it and <laughs> uh and i say that especially after having seen the last one uh Oof. the book <laughs> the book of spots the Sp book of spa. <laughs> spa. <laughs> the high um, privilege horror <laughs> the book of spa. Just a tele um, a telephone book for like a resort town uh-huh no it's funny because like i like darren lynn bozeman i like him um mm -hmm. and uh i just wasn't because he did uh uh, repo the genetic opera right. and that was a great movie even yeah. though paris Hilton was whatever yeah. um it was a fucking weird movie but it looked great it was great i thought it was great um but uh i just that movie i mean i just feel like i know that what they were trying to do but there was just like a few tiny things in it had they done them i think it personally as a saw fan i think it would have 
definitely gone through the roof a lot more and hit home a lot more for a lot of fans and stuff. However, do not get me wrong. After the pandemic and everything, it was the first movie I saw going back to the theaters and I was so stoked because it was a Saw movie, right? And I have an unhealthy obsession with that. Um, so it was really exciting right. for me. But yeah, that would be one that I would do because why not? Um, yeah. But I honestly would, I actually, I'm writing a fan one right now. Hell yeah, spec scripts. Fans all. Yeah. Fans writing... all? Fans all. Fans all. <laughs> it's, a, it's, about, it's about a traveling band that gets hooked up in jigs. It's called Bandsaw. Oh, Bandsaw, yeah. yeah. It's a, a traveling oh my God. band. That's what I could fucking call it. And it'd be like, it's this Bandsaw. And people are like, what the fuck? That's stupid. They're like, oh, it's a Saw movie. But for copyright persons, it's Bandsaw. Yeah, think about that. <laughs> There's a message in that Bandsaw. Um, so... No, I, I love that because the question I was going to ask is if you had like you got like that that blank check and you could work on any big budget property. Uh, but, yeah, I guess the Saul franchise would probably be uh, right up there, which is no, I, I'm absolutely. Uh, so other than like, is there any cur like current movies that you, you've seen recently that you're like, I, I love this uh, whether um, it's stylization or not? Fuck, what was that movie? I keep forgetting the name of it, but I watch it like I've watched it three or four times. I think it's a few years old, but it's in the last five years. Right. Uh, uh, I, I did see Malignant. I didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> fine. Know, it's fine. See, like it's fine. Extremely yeah. predictable. Um, I hate that they were focused so much on it being in Seattle when they didn't shoot one, even one shot in Seattle, but also it had nothing to do with the story. So it was weird that they kept pushing that. Um, I liked the, the fight scene was freaking amazing though. That was cool. A lot of that stuff was cool. It's just, I'm really over the pregnant woman trope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, like that's another thing that I absolutely, I lose, like if I'm watching a series or a movie, the moment it's a pregnant anything, I completely lose interest because that's all they know how to do with female characters. They're yeah. like, oh my God, uh, so we don't know what to do with her. She's going to get pregnant and then she's going to lose the baby because it's going to further her character. Yeah, And it's always something, some stupid shit like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a woman, whether I want children or not, it's freaking boring as crap. Yeah, um, It's lazy writing. I get why he did it for this specific kind of thing, but it could have also just been without her having been pregnant too. Um, and, uh, but let's see, I saw, um, God, what is that freaking movie? That's going to drive me nuts now. What do you, ah! what, what do you think about, uh, what is it? Ari Aster, uh, and like, uh, hereditary and midsummer, like those kind of, I did see Midsummer. I haven't seen hereditary. I'm awful about seeing new movies. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely awful. Um, and uh <clears throat> but i liked midsummer uh very predictable but i liked it a lot um and i thought it was so simplistic like simplest like so simply done um and like beautifully done um i did really enjoy that movie for a lot of the aspects where they didn't go over the top with a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. and i'm really curious like at the end, I'm like, does she actually get to live or does she have to stay with them? Or like, is she just going to be whatever, you know? So that was kind of interesting. Although, to be honest, the first time I saw it, maybe it was like the last five minutes. So I already knew it was going to happen when I went yeah. through and watched it. Um, <laughs> but I was like, damn, I mean, like he was a douchebag, but like, I don't know that he deserved to die like that. <laughs> I, yeah. he, he probably did honestly he, yeah, probably, I mean, he did. probably did i mean whether he did or not i think is beyond anyway we're not talking about midsummer <laughs> <laughs> listen let's talk about midsummer for another hour I, actually i, I like the movie i thought it was it, but uh, very, no, yeah, i liked the, i liked the concept of it and everything like that and i loved the overall aesthetic and it was so great and it's a perfect example of a uh movie that looks really high budget but it was actually pretty low budget um and can also show you that you don't need $50 million to shoot a fucking movie, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, true. Um, okay. Now, before we get into what we do in the show, which is trying to create something new, uh, Dylan and I were actually talking before uh, the show started about like the next uh, upcoming genres. They were always interested in like the genre of movies that are coming out next. Mm -hmm. What was, is there a genre of movie that you would like to see kind of come back or to be the next big wave because obviously superhero and blockbuster is kind of taking over everything but i feel like that's kind of coming to some sort of an end soon i would uh, so uh as you could probably tell i'm really into like the more serious side of stuff i'm not a huge comedy person i 
uh, I had to be like forced to watch comedies. Like it's weird. It's this is the weirdest thing. Most of the time I enjoy it. I just don't got a way to do it. Right. No. Um, I, however, I would love to see, um, I would love to see uh, more comedy coming out, but not, not fucking Will, Will Ferrell humor comedy. Oh, no. Like I, I, I've got a huge like dumbass comedy. Like I can't, although I love Jackass, <laughs> but <laughs> I just watched 4.5. <laughs> um, so oh much God. puke. So much oh, puke. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a scene in there. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, uh, the wait was it the sushi? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> was fucking Stevo? <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Now I know I don't need to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh god, it's so bad. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So yeah, comedies would be great. Like Bridesmaids was awesome, right? Like a lot of that was really ridiculously funny humor, and it wasn't your stere a lot of your stereotypical woman shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see more of that. But since that's come out, there really hasn't been much of that since. Like I don't particularly care for Rebel Wilson um, because she caters a lot. Like a lot of her stuff is very, I'm fat girl. So this is what I'm going to do. And she's very loud about it in her movies and stuff. And now she's skinny. Um, and she is still doing stuff like that. Uh, and it's not, I don't know. I just, maybe it's just me though. I don't get her humor. It's not really my thing, but that's like, I just would like to see comedy where people just simply exist mm. and, and do that. I don't know. I think they think that's would be fun. Cause like, again, bridesmaids is a perfect example of, I think a bunch of women not doing women comedy, but like just existing and it just so happens to be funny as shit. Yep. Completely agree. Um, okay. So obviously we could chat with you all day and we don't want to take up too much of your time. So we're going to get on to what we do uh, in this show. Now, if you could tell people uh, before we obviously do the creation, part, if you could tell people to go, to watch something or like social media or anything that uh, promote yourself uh is there anything that you would like push is is bound out there is, is the trailer for bound out there somewhere yeah uh actually so my i'm very bad at social media and stuff i have a youtube channel that has literally anything i've ever like videoed whether it's like movies or like my furry stuff or anything like that it's all like all the same thing um so but uh two-faced creations oh it might have hold on let me see <laughs> I, I okay uh on youtube uh it's either australia can canada or two-faced creations i can't remember if i changed it but it's a picture of like a two-faced furry on there you can't miss it it has all my um or you can just type in bound proof of concept um it's uh it's on there you could see the three minute like trailer teaser thing i have the 25 minute one private um and then i have a couple other shorts on there that i did for the 48s and that was really cool i love 48s i got a uh, best wardrobe costume because that's what i do mostly is costume design and creation so um which is really cool but yeah yeah uh so you can see that stuff or you could go to dark house uh pictures on facebook um, which is D A R K H A U S pictures. Nice. And that's all my, that's all my, um, updated stuff, including the short that I'm doing right now, which I'm editing. I will be soon. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. we're going to put links to all that stuff in the show notes. So whenever you're watching or listening to this, please check out Australia King Cannon, uh, f find out what they're doing. Check them out. Uh, okay. So Dylan, yeah. Are you are you ready to, to do some pitching? Are you ready? Yes. Uh, you ready for this pitch battle? The sure am. Um, pitch. What's that Jimmy Fallon <laughs> pitched movie? Combat. Oh. Uh, pit, uh, fever pitch. Nah. Oh I, yeah. I ruined that one. Solved okay. By uh, surprise. I'm probably I'm gonna go first. I'm just gonna go first, Dylan. Go for uh, it. Dylan always has more elaborate actual pitches. Mine are weird premises uh that i just laughed myself through anyway we had, a, we had a guess on something i said got to me so i've been working on yeah he, he really he really got dressed down he got dressed down one episode and uh he's not, not been the same since i'll say that uh okay so i had this idea for this kind of like suspenseful thriller uh weird uh, uh thing where someone is uh, attacking bad cops uh and the way they're doing this 
is by uh, looking for hitmen so that they get like fake cops to kind of like say, oh, yeah, I'll definitely do that while they're being recorded. But then it turns out that they're actually murdering the people and setting up the cop who was trying to pose as a fake assassin. Um, I don't have much more on that, except that, uh, yeah, I just wanted this person to kind of try to get back at who they think are bad cops for whatever reason. And they'll probably link uh, leak the info that says these cops were bad. And then the community's like, do we care? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, so that's that's kind of what uh, it's, it's one of these weird premises. I, w- I was I, I want to work on setting up a cop who's trying to set up uh, somebody for an assassination. Bad, bad cop killers. I'll get a name. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, Dil- Dylan. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. I'm just going to read this straight. Yeah. <laughs> when a small town mall in the yeah. 80s gets locked down as the site of a once in a century alien battle royale, a group of college nerds must survive while their honor society friends on the outside work to free the prisoners before the alien reality show leaves everybody within dead, abducted, or worse, whatever that may be. <laughs> it's called Shop Till You Drop Dead. Wait, do aliens come down every hundred years and kill humans? Or they they either hunt people like Predator, or they pit humans against each other, or they have different challenges. And they're like, we put three laser guns in the fountain in the, in the food court. Uh, the first person to kill five humans with the laser gun gets to go outside or something like that. And they, so it's a bunch of challenges. Uh, it's like Alien versus Predator in that like that one episode of Voyager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. So, so they, they, what, they come every hundred years, and then this year it just happens to be there's a mall there. Yeah, it's the, well, it's the 1980. They, you know, they find a spot where humans gather. No, I love it. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying the, to understand. The 80s uh, would be perfect for a mall for sure. Yeah. That's true. Okay, Australia can cannon. Do you have any questions for either one of these pitches before you decide which one you would prefer to work on? Well, uh, damn. Those are very two. Wait, those are two very different. <laughs> it's definitely very two. Def- very two. Very, very two. Very two of them. Uh, hmm. If you don't like mine, I can change it up, I guess. <laughs> I've been known well, to do that. <laughs> well, okay. So with yours, uh, I was a little confused. So is it so the somebody trying to kill bad cops who they think who they deem are bad cops? Okay, and are the people who are killing them they're assassins, right? So, like, uh, like, like, say that I wanted, not that I would want to, uh-huh. but say that it's me and I want to uh, get rid of a like a cop, right? Who I think is a bad cop. Uh, I would uh, put the feelers out there on Reddit or Craigslist. I'm like, <laughs> I need an assassin. Most likely, they would just send a cop to me who's going to record all this stuff and say, I'll definitely do this assassination, uh, blah blah blah, while they're trying to bust me, but. I'm going to kill the person that I was trying to hire them to do it and frame the cop for that because okay. there's proof they did it. Okay. I'm probably not explaining that very well. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> do, I gotta do some Dylan style work on my pitches. It's okay. It's I'm... just the format. Yeah, you can find okay. it online. <laughs> it's 1999. It's a <laughs> rainy summer night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, because like I get his concept really, I get his pretty good, but well, yours, yours is a little confusing. Now it just might be my simple brain. I no, I don't, it, I don't uh, translate very well. But because I, I literally this, you know, most people when they're telling a story is like this, and I'm like, mm. and so uh, my brain doesn't work very well. Um, hmm. You could take Dylan's. That's fine. Zach, <laughs> he could he could use the win. <laughs> I won last week. No, that's true. Yeah, actually, See, you've been winning a lot this season. It's uh, yours is a good concept, Zach. I just think that it's more of like an episode of something. Ooh, like like Black Mirror, you know that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that that's what more of yours would be aimed towards because I don't think you can make an entire movie out of that unless you have obviously a main actor or a main character who's an officer who gets framed, who's trying to prove that it was this other dude. Right. Mm. Which isn't a bad idea either. It's just, um, yeah, I just feel like that would be a really good, 
like episode of something, like an hour long episode of something. Yeah, I was pitching an hour long episode of something. I forgot to oh, put yeah. that in the oh, very yeah. beginning. Okay. Oh, okay. My God, by the way, this is an hour long <laughs> pitch uh, for, for a Black Mirror. Okay, so D Dylan so, wins. Dylan. Well, actually, I actually have a question about Dylan's. Um, <laughs> is what, how, how are you trying to, um, like, I get the concept of it. What I mean, I don't know if you guys are willing to like tell the end of it, but like, what are you hoping? <laughs> what are you hoping that happens with this battle royale type of thing? Like, are the humans fighting back, or are they like, what is it exactly the purpose of it? What's the point of it? He probably doesn't know he's muted. I was muted. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's okay. I didn't say much that I was muted on. I don't think. Um, no. <laughs> no. Uh why is the battle royale happening is the question or like what's the, what happens with it uh, uh so like in alien versus predator right mm -hmm. the whole point is for the predators come down hone their skills and see if they're predator enough to right. leave that place right um and in this case they're actually pitting humans against each other right yeah so are the humans in the are the humans in the story um are they going to be the focal point? Like them trying to stop this to get out of there and like kill the aliens or what the fuck ever and this thing from happening yeah. again? Or is it the aliens? Uh, is there going to be actual alien story with it? Or is it all alien? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I figured it'd be most, almost entirely humans. And eventually you get the realization that this is like a form of entertainment for the aliens. And then that really kind of, uh, works as a crucible to get the everybody to start working together like we're not going to be some tv show for an alien species or something mm -hmm. like that yeah we abandoned gladiator fights centuries ago i don't know why yeah. these aliens are still doing this also just so you know i'll we don't know what we're talking about we're literally no. making these up now we're about to work on them so, so no development on we don't know what the pictures. ending really is unless oh no that's really cool good. i mean my shit changes all the time as mm -hmm. i'm writing you yeah. know and uh, the best advice I ever got was write the biggest piece of shit and edit from there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, that's what I like to do. So I was just curious more along the lines of where you're hoping to go with that. But I'm going to have to say, oh, this is a tough one because yours is Zax's right up my alley. Mm -hmm. But I really like Dylan's. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to probably go with Aliens and Battle Royale. Awesome. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Let's figure out what this is going to be. Uh, okay, so before we get started, obviously go check out Dark House on Facebook. Uh, check out Australia and Canon on YouTube. Find out what they're doing. Be a fan. Be a friend. Um, okay, so Dylan. Okay. We have aliens. We have a mole. We have a bunch of humans possibly dying. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what were, were you seeing? This is like a, like a feature film. Were you seeing this as like a like a series? Uh, how do you see this? I see it as a feature, but I could see it being a series, but there would need to be, I couldn't see it being a series without some sort of filler or B plot or something like that. It's, yeah. I mean, it's not, I, I'll be the first to admit, this is not a complex concept. <laughs> right. Uh, so, all right, let, let's, let's, let's say this is like a standalone project, like a feature film, yeah. and it's going to be a little more, um, you know, a little more high concept i guess we're just gonna trust that the audience will understand uh what's happening when aliens yeah. just uh okay so uh i'll show you does, does the way your like concept right do you have like a lot of weird ideas that you write them down do you have one idea that you work on for a while what, what's your normal like thought process uh <clears throat> so i get hyper obsessed with something and then i write about it until i can't focus on it anymore and then i get hyper obsessed about something else and do that um, and then go back to the other thing. However, depending on, depending on the time that I have, um, really gets the hyper fixation going. So, uh, with something like this, if it was my project, I would be like on it right now, like fucking Donkey Kong. I make like voice notes on my phone. If I like have a good idea, I'll write shit down. I'll do whatever. I'll be like, I just want this line somewhere in this fucking movie, or I just want this scene or whatever. And I just want to see his ass in this scene for no reason, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I had to download an app so I could, uh, like voice record stuff because literally I'll be laying in bed at like 3am and I'm just like, fuck, I can't get this out of my head. I gotta do this. So that helps a lot, by the way, when you can't like actively write. 
yeah, voice recorder. I think I have two of those, and I never mm-hmm. want to listen back. I looked at them, I was like, these are from a month ago. I don't even want to hear that junk. <laughs> <laughs> Someday I'll go through. Okay, so Dylan, you, you have this concept, and uh, um, now, I, I, okay, so now we have to like set up the fact that this has been happening for a while, right? But I would assume that you want to just kind of pop uh, the audience into the, the, the business first, and then we'll somehow learn, right? Because I mean, if this happened a hundred years ago, we have history, so uh, we'll know that there's most likely un- like. So is this like a hundred year purge that like humans know is happening? You think? I don't know if humans know what's happening. I think this is the first time it happens in the modern age. All right, cool. Because the last time it would have happened, nineteen eighty, let's say nineteen eighty four, because it's the classic eighties year. Ooh, good year. Eighteen eighty four would be like just as the civil war is wrapping up like i mean there's there's probably not a whole lot of record of some large you know it's probably written down as like mass hysteria or something like that yeah um i'll show you when you're coming up with an idea or like a concept do you have like a like a a normal method like are you like a like a three arc structure person are you a save the cat person uh do you have a normal method to how your stories go i always know how my story ends and begin uh wait begins and ends um and that's where i start and it's like the worst possible place to start i feel like because you're supposed to have a three story act, like a three act story and uh, i don't always get that middle part um that's usually the last thing that comes i'm like okay mm-hmm. great but uh i always know my beginning and end and those hardly ever change um because i know that's exactly what i want so nice uh, now, Dylan, what would you say is is some sort of an ending for this? Obviously, the aliens are going to lose or go away or get a full Let refund. The aliens win. Aliens, <laughs> right. aliens win. So that's um, the thing about American it, movies is that we like happy endings and we like heroes and things like that. But wouldn't it be crazy, though, if they fucking lost? Yeah, I'm into that. All right. I, I would see it. Less is I, I, aliens win technically, I suppose, but more like the alien plan happens, and it's not necessarily interrupted or it go it goes off. And the only reason that the I mean, we could do a really bleak ending, and I've been accused of being overly bleak before on this show. Um, I have <laughs> season one, I was, um, oh, yeah. but I, I I'm still seeing like at least a few of the main characters escape with their lives or at yeah. least survive it. Um, but I don't think they end the cycle or like something like that. I think the aliens effectively are kind of like non appearing almost beyond whatever announcements they put out there or whatever things they send down. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I'm, no, I'm into that. Um, all right. You so you want some cookies? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, actually. I, would actually, I would love one. <laughs> There you go. Um, okay, so we, I, I like the idea of like starting out on a mall. It's the you know mid 80s. Uh, people are just happy. Uh, Arcade, sweaters, sound, are, all sweaters that shit. are pink and yellow. Things are just nice. A lot uh, of fluorescent green. Yeah, Reeboks. Yeah. Everywhere. Um, okay, so then we, we have this thing and things are going on and they're, they're hanging Nightmare out. Nightmare on Elm Street, fucking part three or four is playing in the theater. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Four year old Zach Wiseman's running around somewhere. Um, <laughs> I guess that'd be six now. Uh, okay, so I, I like the idea of like starting in an arcade and having like maybe like somebody playing like an alien. Uh, invasion video yes, game, invaders. right? And that's that's like an yeah. easy way of kind of starting an '80s thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I would assume this is going to start getting wrecked, right? It's like what la- alien? Yeah, like lasers are going <laughs> yeah. off, and people are like, "What's what's this?" Um, okay, so I, I like that. I, I also like the ending of it just kind of ending, like uh, the so the way I what the way I thought about the when Dylan first said it was. It's like an amusement park kind of for aliens. Like they would go to a different planet and just, you know, do their super purge shit or whatever. And then, uh, and then that's it. They, they spend their. Like laser tag, except for you die. Yeah. There could be a team of aliens who are there to partake where they're like, oh, we drew straws. We get to be on the show this time. We're here on earth. Like 
this is our time. So that way, maybe there could be alien characters wandering around. But Yeah, I like that. Or they're and, like alien pranksters. They're just coming here to kill humans for their nobody show. Nobody knows what's happening until they meet the aliens. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll show you. What, what's your favorite kind of alien? Ooh. Uh... I like. I'm... Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say because you have like your the grays, right? You have your normal, just your yeah. little gray men. You have your Cloverfield, uh, a weird, uh, uh, you know, ape-like beasts. Uh, you have your amorphous blobs, which everyone are, are fans of. Uh, you have your humanoids, which are just the whatevers, but they have like no nose or no ears right, for some right. reason. <laughs> uh, what what kind of alien do you think we should work with with this pseudo vintage? 80s horror definitely along the lines of a star trek so almost humanoid but not actually humanoid or like you know not very humanoid features but the anatomy ish you know really you're like oh it's humanoid ish yeah. uh only because that would make sense uh with this kind of thing whereas like predators you know those guys they were just like you know all brute yeah. force and you knew it was something going on right whereas somebody sophisticated enough is going to do a battle royale type of thing cool so it's got to be somebody it's got to for us anyway it would be somebody who would appear more higher uh intellect than than uh xenomorphs or predators so yeah i like that <clears throat> so they they start just what they just destroy the arcade and then we kind of get like our first glimpse of these aliens and they're just doing they're just wrecking stuff right now we know i guess at the end that they're just done with their tour and they leave <clears throat> and the majority of people are probably dead except for some and those are our heroes of the story yeah, they're the ones that get some out of them. and they're going to be able to tell the tale that hey in a hundred years uh if you're here things are going to get bad um all right so dylan let's work on like a like a three-act structure here right uh what would you say would be a cool first arc ending uh because um yeah i'll, I'll let you take over as I, far as how, how you structure your arcs well you need the inciting incident so the stories get, so the characters know kind of like something has happened so that would be what might initially appear to be an accident, but then it very clearly becomes an attack. And that leads into your first big action set piece, which ends with um, everybody taking shelter somewhere. And then the announcement is made where the aliens are like, thank you for participating. You know, they do some sort of like, oh, it's a gear ready for whatever yeah. the alien announcement thing is comes yeah. up and everybody just goes, oh, ooh, okay. So like, and then the second act is probably mostly like, I mean, it's probably mostly the actual challenges. We would meet the characters outside the mall mm -hmm. and, you know, they have to help get their friends out, obviously. Um, and then you have the difficulties inside and maybe they're trying to get into the mall and you realize that there's something like extra extraterrestrial happening. Uh, Something goes wrong in the middle. You have your dark moment where, you know, they're at the lowest point. And then the issue is how you <laughs> portray human beings with no advanced technology successfully pulling one over on aliens who are able to get here and do this sort of thing. Radio Shack? Oof. <laughs> I got gotta, uh, love, gotta love a good radio it's, shack. I mean, answer. it's a it's it's a little too an, it's a it's an animorphs reference to uh, yeah, it, it's one have of them the go to build an alien technology out of Radio Shack. But, yeah, um, it is definitely one of the one of the best eighties. Uh, uh, what? Uh, yeah, uh, Dos Ex Machina. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm very glad to. I, I like seeing it when I do, but I understand why it's not necessarily uh, good storytelling. <laughs> so, but okay, no, no, oh, go ahead. I'll show you. Uh. Characters, a lot of them are in for themselves because obviously it's it's a devastating thing. Most people don't think about working together, right? But then they realize they have to work together. There's always going to be that one asshole who's like, fuck you guys, I'm on my own and whatever, right? Um, but uh, that's actually not a bad idea is to do like a Radio Shack type of thing um, because they're going to need stuff, right? Um and it's funny, the simple, the like something as simple uh, for the actual conflict um, for them to pull something over on them. Because uh, I, I play, 
I play whole movies in my head when I'm talking about all this mm -hmm. stuff. So it's just super easy. Like when they're playing in the arcade at the beginning, right? It's like pew, 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 pew. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden they start hear, hearing yep. people <laughs> screaming. And they're like, what the fuck? And they see people screaming and running away. They're like, holy crap. And then pew, like the game that they're playing is explodes in front of them. They're like, holy fuck. And that's when they start realizing something's wrong with but instead of being outside, people being outside of the um, mall, they should literally just be inside. Nobody can get out. Uh, you could because you could have a closed set that way too, and you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about finding a mall. But also, um, also like I'm not gonna lie, like I might you might be my best friend in the entire world, but if I know fucking aliens are inside, fucking ruining this shit and killing people, nobody in their right mind is gonna run in there. I don't like that. Just that's one thing I don't like about a lot of movies is they're like, all of a sudden this person has like zero fear of anything Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. and they're doing it. Um, unless well, somebody gets out and they get like the military involved or some shit like that. Right. Right. But by then it's going to be either this big giant battle of the exterior battle or they arrive too late mm. and they see like them taking off or something right now. But, and that could very well be something that happens in there too. Uh, yeah. And so it's like this like small group of friends or people, maybe even like frenemies, enemies, whatever. And they have to like work together and figure it out. And they find one of their fucking weapons and they're like, how the fuck do they mm -hmm. do this? But the weapon is uh, like uh, DNA coded or whatever. So ah, they can't actually yep. act yeah, they can't <laughs> actually activate it. But with Radio Shack's help, they could fucking... They could circumvent it or something. Yeah, yeah. they could yeah. bypass it. They could, you know, at least make it work for them. Um, and so they're trying to get out of there. And uh, the aliens are like, what the fuck? But this is also our highest ratings ever. And yeah. so, <laughs> um, yeah, lots of lots of quips, lots of whists. So it's exciting and dangerous, but it's also kind of Ryan Reynolds funny, maybe, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, and then... Maybe they have to, maybe they find, uh, I did see this in quarantine two, which they, I know it's fucking awful, but hey, that's a solid they, movie. Found, they found like, uh, they found like, um, like an old, uh, not, not a, not a shoot, but like they found some, like an old crawl space or whatever, yeah. where you have to like old ducks and stuff or whatever. So they're like, Oh shit. And they crawl through that and get out of there. Uh, because a lot of the time they're just going to be thinking about main entrances and things mm -hmm. like that. Right. So they lock this thing up with like a fucking force field and then they just use the, and there's not really an arena there. It's just like this force field and the mall yeah. is the arena. Yeah. No, I like that. This is actually kind of cool. I think, that, <laughs> I think we should spend some more time. Uh, working on this. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do, it, and we're not gonna, we don't have time to do this right now. But we would need to do like that. Uh, your four set characters that don't know each other, but then kind of come together at the end and just survive, not really solve the problem. Two uh, of them need to know each other, even if they're yeah. not friends. Two of them yeah. need to know each other, like uh, and then the rest of them can just kind of be like. I was just here with my with my on vacation. Like I don't even know why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, we also need to have a couple jocks that are going to just die uh, horrifically while trying just to be strong. Yeah. Um, and we also need to figure out like that one, because like in almost every alien movie that's similar to this, there's that one thing that they're just weak to. Uh, right. And yeah, like their weaponry, sure. And I like them using the, you know, Radio Shack or Electronics Boutique or whatever and, you know, kind of hacking it so that it does Pizza. work. Yeah. <laughs> Pizza. Pizza. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking 80s is also known for cocaine. So maybe the aliens just can't handle maybe that. <laughs> Got it's like a business, like a most business trend. Most effective if you shove it up their rear. Yeah. I mean, you find that, it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's most effective on most of us. Um, but we are going to uh, uh, do this on our other show, which comes out on Tuesday, uh, which is our live show. So we would just ask people, hey, come check us out on Twitch or YouTube or whatever on our live show on Tuesday. Australia can can. And thank you so much for taking your time and being super awesome mm -hmm. and helping us create something uh, which is going to be a mega billion dollar uh, oh, franchise, yeah, totally. which you're going to work on as well. So, oh, uh, oh, awesome. <laughs> but no, we actually, uh, honestly, we appreciate your time. We appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, we appreciate your awesome mind. Uh, please. Like I told everybody earlier, go check out dark house on Facebook. Uh, go check out Australia and Canada on, on YouTube and, and watch bound. Uh, also, 
Watch the movie Unholy, which is the one where oh. Carrie always has the Boston accent. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. It finally clicked on me, and I was like, I have this cool idea where instead of bringing down a like a, a, a like a, a an angel, it's a demon. I'm like, wait, I just I literally just watched that movie. It's called Unholy. Uh, yeah, but that is I, where Carrie always has the weird Boston accent. I love um, him so much, but he's I was great. like, baby, yeah. Baby. Not not a good <laughs> accent. I'll take your British. I'll take your saw grime. Uh, I'll take everything. But uh, maybe your Boston needs a little bit of work. But um, that movie you. wasn't that good either. It wasn't that good. It it was watchable though. I've turned a lot. It of was movies watchable. Off. Yep, like Marmaduke. Very very bad movie. I abs- Please do yeah. not watch. Do not watch that movie. It is. Man. I I hate it. I tried to watch it five times. Can't do it. Tune into my after show where all I do is bitch about Marmaduke and I call it puking on Marmaduke. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I'll show you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I could not say it enough. Uh, you're, you're super awesome. And I would love to have you on all of our shows. So thank you for being so cool. Oh, well, I mean, I am free most days. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uh, cool. Well, if you ever want to watch the first episode of something in the last episode, or just make up what happens in the middle. We would love to have you on our other show called no time to binge. Uh, but either way, um, yeah, send me I'll, an invite. Yeah, all, right. <laughs> all I can say right now is thank you. Uh, Dylan Terry, do you have any words of wisdom for our friends and fans out there? No. <laughs> I love you. Uh, all right, everyone, drink some water. Uh, they have been Australia. He has been Dylan. I have been Zach. But you've been great. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Take it easy out there. Thank you.